All right, guys, so now that Redux is, is all set up, we have our reducer, we have our action functions, um, we're going to now implement the back end by making requests to it from our front end. And we do that within the actions. So there's a, there's a few things we need to change. Um, one thing is in the reducer, in the item reducer, we want to completely get rid of this because this is just static data that we've been dealing with. So we want to we want to keep the items array, but it, we want it to be empty. Okay, because it shouldn't we shouldn't have da um, static data inside of here. Another thing I want to do is add to our state a loading value, which will be a Boolean and it'll be false by default. Now, the reason for this is because when we fetch data, it could take us a, a, a couple milliseconds to get and this will be set to false. But once we start to get the data, once we make that request, we want this set to true. And then when, when we get the data back, we want it set back to false. Now we're going to have one more type called items loading. So I'm going to bring that in here. Items underscore loading. Okay, um, and we're going to have to create that in our type. So let's go to actions types and just go ahead and add that in here. So we'll say items underscore loading. And right here, items loading and save that close it up. Okay, so we have this items loading and then down here we're going to add it as a case. So we'll go, let's see, we'll just go right here. We'll say case items underscore loading. And then all this is going to do is change the loading from false to true. So let's say return. We want the initial state, three dots, initial state, and then change loading to true. Okay, that's all that this this is this case is going to do. Um, so I'm going to save this and then we're going to go into our actions. Okay, our items actions. And I just want to add another function in here called set items loading, which is just going to dispatch that items loading, which we have to bring in here as well. So items loading. And we're going to say, uh, let's see, let's do export. Um, const set items loading no parameters and all it's going to do is return the type of items loading okay which ultimately just sets it from false to true So now what we want to do is let's let's work on fetching the items. Okay, so this get items. Now, the way that we have to set this up is now different that we're going to make a, a request and we're going to use Axios for this. So we have to actually install that. So I'm going to just open up another terminal here. Make sure you're in the client side. Very important. So you want to CD into client if you're not already in there. And then you will just want to NPM install Axios. And Axios, most of you probably know what it is. It's just an HTTP client. It's very, very easy to use. You could use the fetch API if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and import Axios so we can use it. So I want to do from uh, Axios. And then what we want to do is in get items, we need to add in right here. We need to add in dispatch. And this is where Thunk comes in. It allows us to do this so that we can make an asynchronous request. We actually want to add another arrow here. And I know this looks a little weird, but in order for us to use this dispatcher, we have to do this. Um, so before. Actually, I'm just going to completely get rid of this. We're still going to we're going to use this dispatch to send the type along with the, the data that's that we get from our request. But I'm going to delete that for now. And we want to call the set items loading and we can do that by calling dispatch and then we can call any of these actions and we want to call this right here set items loading because we want the loading to be set to true for now. Make sure you put some parentheses in there. Then we want to make our request. So we're going to say Axios. We're going to make a get request. So I'm going to go on to the next line and do dot get 
And then we want to make our request to slash API slash items, which is our back end. Remember, we added that proxy in the package.json in React. That's made it so that we can just do this instead of having to do HTTP, localhost 5000, and so on. It knows what we're talking about when we do this. Um, and then that's going to return a promise. So we'll do dot then. And then that will give us a response or a result. And then we want to set that to um, we're going to return dispatch. And inside this dispatch, I'm actually going to put that on the next line like that. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So inside this dispatch, we're going to pass in some curly braces. And this is where we want to send our type, which will still be get items just like it was before. And then we also want to send the payload, which is going to be the response dot data. Okay, so this is going to be the data that comes in from the back end when we hit this endpoint. And just to remind you, because it's been a while, if we look at our back end and we go to routes, API items, we're hitting this. Where is it? Uh, this endpoint right here. This is API items, and it's just going to grab them from the database and it's going to return them in JSON format. Okay, so that's what we're doing here is we're making that request to that endpoint, getting the data, sending it as a payload to the dispatcher. So let's save this and then let's go to the dis the uh, I'm sorry, I keep saying dispatcher, the reducer and we'll go to get items. And in addition to um, just returning the state, the current state, we want to also add the new item. I'm sorry, not add the new item, but get the items. Because right now items is blank. So what we're doing here is we're basically making a copy of the current state and we're adding these new items which come from the action dot payload. Okay? And then we also want to make sure we set loading back to false. Because before we made the request, we called set items loading, which makes a request to the reducer with items loading as the type, which sets loading to true. So it's set to true before we make the request. After we make the request and we get the items back and we get that payload, which I spelt wrong, we also we want to set loading back to false. Okay, and you could use this to actually add a little spinner or something if you wanted to, but we're not going to get into that. We do do that in the Udemy course, um, but this should work. So let's save this. And let's go back. I think I'm forgetting something. Oh, no, I'm not. So there we go. Milk, because milk is actually the only the only item in our API. And we can check that by going to localhost 5000 API items. And you can see we just have milk. All right. So we're able to now get items and it's coming from our API. And you can see loading. If we look in the diff, once we get the items, loading is set from true back to false. All right, cool. Now, if I try to delete, it will delete. But if I reload, it comes back because it's not actually deleting it from the server. It's just deleting it from the UI. Same thing. If I were to add a new item, you'll see it gets added. But if I reload, it goes away. So we have to we have to deal with that. So let's go back to our actions. And let's see, let's what should we do the add? Let's do let's do the delete item. Um, actually, let's do the ad, but we'll move it up. I actually want this up here instead. Yeah. Okay. So for the ad item, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add in the dispatcher here. So dispatch and we're going to, uh, we'll just get rid of this for now. And we want to make our request to it's going to be a post request this time. Actually, I'll put it on the next line. So let's say post and we want to make this to slash API slash items. And then we want to pass along some data because we're adding an item. Now this item comes in from here, right? It comes in from our item modal component. When we call the add item action, we pass in an item and that's what we want to pass in here. Now, one issue we have is if we look at the item modal and we look at the submit. 
Okay, so in the submit, we have the new item. We're actually setting the ID with UUID. Now, remember what I said with MongoDB, it creates its own ID. So we don't actually want to create an ID. All we want is the name. So we want to get rid of this, this ID and just have the name and we can actually get rid of this uh, import as well since we're not using UUID anymore. And that should now just be just the name and that gets passed in here. So let's make sure we save that and go back to the actions. And now this will make a post request. The item should just be the name. It's going to return a promise. And then inside here, we're going to get a result, a response. And what we want to do is the same thing we did is just set it to dispatch. Let's put this down here. And then in the dispatch, We just want to pass in some curly braces with the type of uh, add item and then the payload will be the data. So payload will be res data. Now, what is this data? If we look in our back end again, if we look in our API items, look in the post, what it returns is that new item that we add. Okay, so that's actually what we're sending to the reducer is that new item. So if we save this and go to our reducer and we look at add item, um, there's really nothing else we need to do here because the payload is the new item and it's going to get added. It's also being added on the server, so it'll get added to our database as well. But we don't actually have to change anything here. This, this should be able to stay the same. So let's try it out. Let's go back and let's uh, let's reload just for good luck. We don't have to, but we'll do it anyway. And then let's add an item. We'll say eggs and let's click add item. So it gets added. Now let's refresh. And it's still there. And if we look at our API, let's reload this URL here, the, the back end API items. And there it is. We are here. It is eggs. It has the date and it has its own ID. And take note that in MongoDB, it's actually underscore ID, not just ID. So now we want to take care of the delete because just like before, now if I click delete, it deletes both. And we're having an issue here, not only because we haven't made the delete request, but if we look inside shopping list.js, we're still using um, right here where we map through our items, we're using ID, but it should actually be underscore ID because now these items are coming from Mongo, which has an underscore ID instead of ID. So we want to change this to underscore ID, change this key to underscore ID. And let's see when we click the delete button, we want to change this to underscore ID. And then that gets passed in here. It's okay if we leave this. This could be anything. Um, but this the underscore ID is what's being passed in. And then we call our props delete item. So let's go to our actions and go to delete item and we'll take care of this. So from here we want to make a request to this a this this endpoint API items and then the ID and what it'll do is it'll find it and then it'll remove it and it'll just send a response that says success true, which we could do something with if we wanted, but we're, we're, we're not even going to bother with that. Um, and if there's an error, it'll send a 404 error. All right, so let's go back to our actions and let's handle this delete item. So we want to add in our dispatch. And then I'm just going to replace this with our delete request. So we'll say Axios delete. And then I'm going to put some back ticks in here because the endpoint that we want to hit is API slash items. And we also want the ID variable. So we need to put this syntax like that. Okay, and then that will give us a promise. So we'll say dot then and the response We're going to map to our dispatch. And inside dispatch, we're going to pass in some curly braces. We're going to add the type, which is going to be delete item. 
and then the payload is just going to be the ID. Okay, it's going to be the ID that we want to delete. So this will take care of deleting it from the server and then we're going to dispatch to the reducer. Let's make sure we save this. And if we look at our reducer, it's we want the same thing to happen except there's one little change we need to make. Remember that Mongo has underscore ID, so the items are not going to have an ID field. They now have an underscore ID. So we want to change that to underscore ID. And that should be the only thing we need to change. So we'll save that and let's go back and let's go ahead and try to delete one of these. So we'll say eggs goes away. It calls the delete item action. If I reload, it's still gone. Awesome. So if we add something here, water, let's add a couple things. Eggs, candy. Can't forget candy. All right. And if we delete eggs, that goes away. If I reload, everything stays. If we look at our endpoint here, you can see we have candy, milk, water. Good. So everything is working. This is now a full stack MERN application that also uses Redux, also uses React Strap, and what's the other thing? The React transitions. All right. So hopefully you guys learned quite a bit in this little series. Um, as I said before, this is a very simple application on the surface, but a lot is going on under the hood. Um, so that I mean, that's the point of the whole series. It's not to build this extravagant application because this is, I mean, we could build this app with anything and we could do much less work. The point is that you know how everything works together. So um, in the next video, what I want to do is just kind of uh, I want to build everything out. And I want to deploy to Heroku because right now, sure, we've built this full stack application, but we still just have it running on our dev server. How do we actually get this online? So that's what we're going to do in the next video.